What is going on, Off Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're going to talk about how you can maximize fat burning with intermittent fasting utilizing the current studies that we have. You're definitely not going to want to miss this one. Stay tuned. Okay, of course, before we jump right into it, this video is sponsored by yours truly, Fledge Fitness. You can get yourself the Fledge Fitness Jump Rope for only $16.50. If you haven't gotten yours yet, what are you waiting for? You know these bad boys always sell out. With an amazing ergonomic design, aluminum handle with a swivel design, it is definitely an excellent speed jump rope. If you wanna get yours, the link will be down in the description below. And now let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Okay, so, over the years, there have been many studies involving intermittent fasting and studies that have been positive and studies that have been negative. But usually with those studies where intermittent fasting doesn't do so well are the studies where the participants are allowed to eat during the fasting window, either 500 or 1,000 calories. So understanding the breadth of knowledge that we have with the scientific evidence, I'm going to go ahead and give you the best pointers pulling from those studies. And of course, I'm gonna link those very important studies down below. So basically from the beginning of the video, you should know that it is pretty sketchy if you wanna do intermittent fasting to maximize fat burning, but you're also interjecting uh, calorie intake during your fasting window. All of the studies that consistently show intermittent fasting succeeding even over things like just doing a caloric restriction all have one singular premise, and that is that you do not eat anything at all during your fasting window. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't consume anything, things that don't carry calories, but you can still consume them, even like vitamins, nutrition, things like that. Those things are still uh, available for you to take in, but it has to be zero calories. So there are studies that are sprinkled here and there where participants don't eat anything at all, or the participants just drink water, or the participants have like some type of zero calorie drink, and those things keep the consistency of the successful studies going. The thing that breaks the consistency and ends up not being successful at a higher rate or a higher clip are the studies called Modified Alternate Day Fasting and 5-2. Why? Because those studies inherently allow you to consume 500 up to 1,000 calories on your fasting time frame, And that is a major disruptor because we're understanding through the science, through the literature, that there are hormonal shifts that happen. And this is where we talk about the metabolic switchover. Now, the metabolic switchover was a 16 clinical trial study that was done by Dr. Stephen Anton and colleagues. And they looked at when does that transition happen, where we see a difference when someone is intermittent fasting versus when someone is not intermittent fasting, when someone goes into an actual fasted state and they reach that fasted state. And what Stephen Anton and his colleagues found was that around the eight to 12 hour mark, most people do that switchover during that time frame, depending on how fat adapted you are, how comfortable your body is with the mechanism. It might switch over earlier or later, but within that time frame, once that happens, your body is now in a post absorptive range and then it starts to actually tackle your body fat aggressively. But interestingly enough, it also preserves muscle. So it's preserving muscle, it's retaining muscle, but it's burning body fat. And this is because your body is partitioning the calorie that it is excreting. The calorie that it is burning is being literally targeted. Although you cannot spot reduce on your body, you are actually targeting body fat specifically over all other uh, energy sources. And this happens during that metabolic switchover. So obviously, if you wanna maximize body fat, you have to at least be fasting for more than 12 hours. So from the current major studies that I've spoken about so far, obviously make sure you don't consume anything at all and make sure you are at least going above 12 hours. Some people like to do 12 hours of fasting, 12 hours of eating. You might get into the range slightly, but is it going to be as aggressive and as effective as someone who's doing 16 hours of fasting? Based on the studies, it doesn't look like that would be the case. Now, there have also been studies that show that intermittent fasting in and of itself can improve 
health biomarkers. And the reason I say intermittent fasting in and of itself can do this is because they actually took two groups and they put them at a caloric maintenance level, which means they did not want them to lose weight. They wanted group A that was fasting not to lose weight. They wanted group B that was not fasting not to lose weight. And the reason they did this is because losing body fat or reducing your weight is the thing that actually improves health. Just the fact that you're losing weight can increase health markers. So a big argument that people were making against intermittent fasting was that, well, all these health things that you're seeing is simply because intermittent fasting is helping you lose weight. Thus, the weight loss is what's making you healthier, not intermittent fasting. But researchers have tried to see if that is the case. And they noticed that when you implement an intermittent fasting protocol, regardless of the fact that they're losing weight or not, health markers still improve. Insulin resistance goes down. Oxidative stress goes down. Insulin sensitivity is increased. Blood flow is increased. Inflammation is decreased. So there are health markers that happen simply from the protocol of fasting, regardless of weight loss, which means intermittent fasting in and of itself uniquely carries some sort of a system that allows you to become healthier, even if you're not losing weight. And that's pretty important because the healthier your body is, the more effective it becomes at doing things like burning body fat. So you are maximizing your body fat burning when you are doing this. Now, the studies that show this, however, have tend to be the studies that are time restricted feeding, which is about 16 hours of fasting and eight hours of eating. But it also does it within the circadian rhythm where the uh, participants are eating earlier rather than later. Now, there are many studies that have been coming out recently that is showing a benefit to eating earlier rather than later. And the reason that this is happening is because the circadian rhythm is in line uh, or in tune with things like temperature and sunlight. And there are certain hormonal actions that take place simply because it's the morning versus the night. And they felt that metabolism is stronger, is, is more potent during the morning than it is at night. So if you eat during that time, you are burning a lot of the energy during the times that you're eating it. So it, it shows that there is a benefit to eating earlier rather than later. But there are still many, many studies out there that show that there's benefits even if you eat later rather than earlier. The fasting protocol itself is the beneficial factor. But if you are doing intermittent fasting and you're eating later and you would prefer to eat earlier, like when you wake up, then have no fear. There have been positive studies on that end as well. And of course, the major study that we recently talked about last week, which was the meta-analysis, shows that intermittent fasting versus just caloric restriction can be very powerful because it showed many benefits for the intermittent fasting group versus caloric restriction group or regular diet group, which were the two terms that they used for that meta analysis. They compiled so many different studies and they looked at the outcomes. And with all of this combined through the meta analysis, what the indicators were was that intermittent fasting was the thing that was reducing insulin resistance, that was reducing BMI, body mass index, that was uh, improving things like insulin sensitivity, that was preserving muscle. So all of that was coming from the intermittent fasting group and they were utilizing randomized control trials and control trials, which is really important. So it's a meta analysis, which is incredibly important because it puts it at the top of the pyramid for scientific research, for scientific studies. And not only that, it was also a control study looking at groups that were doing the same thing and just splitting them and, and interjecting the intermittent fasting protocol or the regular diet protocol. So it's a very, very powerful meta analysis. And what it shows is that doing one meal a day or doing 16 hours of fasting, eight hours of eating or alternate day fasting, not the modified version, the full version where you fast one day and you don't the next and you fast one day and you don't the next, so on and so forth. It was showing that those intermittent fasting protocols are very beneficial. So hopefully this kind of gave you a summary of the current studies that we have so that you can kind of navigate your way through if you're trying to figure out what kind of intermittent fasting protocol you're trying to implement or if you're worried that you don't want to fast in the morning because maybe something's wrong because it's the breakfast time uh, where people are, are supposed to be skipping it if you're an intermittent fasting uh, advocate. No, if you want to do the eating window 
window when you wake up, you can do that. If you want to do it at night, you can do that. If you want to do a smack dab in the middle, which is kind of what I do, you can do that as well. It's all up to you. You can still maximize fat burning while doing that. One thing that you can decipher from this is that the longer that you fast, the better it is in terms of your body mobilizing body fat and burning through it. Because once you do that metabolic switch over, you are in that fasted state until you eat again. But there is a point of diminishing returns and it tends to be after the 48 hour mark where everything stops climbing and then just kind of starts to drop down. So basically within this time frame of at most 48 hours, you have a lot of wiggle room to work with. As I mentioned, I will link all of these studies down below if you want to take a look at them for yourself. But hopefully this kind of summarization that I did on the current studies can help you make a more informed decision when it comes to your if protocol and of course as always guys i want to thank my patrons for my patreon and i'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here And of course, as always, guys, I'll see you on Sunday for another FAQ. Peace!